You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products like Venom heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident fanalist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. Well, today we're going to have a little bit of fun. I, I, I have a plan, and as you know, sometimes these plans don't come to fruition, but here's kind of how I want to break this down. I want to do sort of a two-part laughing at the enemy. Today I've gathered up some Chicago Bears live streams, and we're going to listen to meltdowns unfold in sort of real time. And then tomorrow, I want to do a more, I think, traditional laughing at the enemy, which is post-game meltdowns. Sound good? All right, that's the plan. Before we get started, um, obviously, the big news, talked about it a little bit last night. It was kind of getting the news live. I uh, just wanted to comment on the Aaron Rodgers thing. First of all, obviously, we don't have to do the whole 65% shtick anymore, which, let's be honest, it was a funny thing. Kind of was looking forward to seeing that video posted 70,000 times, and all that stuff. But I don't think I realized how much I was looking forward to watching Rodgers play for the Jets. I, I, and I can't even put my finger on what exactly it is. But I will say, it does feel... I don't know how to put it. It's almost like there was a part of me that felt like I should have been more upset about Rodgers leaving than I was. And I think maybe underlying that was the fact that he's not gone. He's still playing in the NFL because now that he's not playing in the NFL, and I'm skeptical that he's ever going to play in the NFL again, now I feel like I'm being hit by that like moderate sadness that I felt was missing when he left the Green Bay Packers. Like It, it just feels like, dude, what is the NFL without Rodgers? It doesn't make sense. It's just me. I don't know. I can't speak for everybody else, but th- there's just sort of this, like now I'm being hit by these things of like, dude, there's no Rodgers and this is kind of depressing. And I don't know why I didn't feel that when he left Green Bay, but I'm starting to feel it now that he's just out of the NFL. I don't know. It's just it's just very weird. I don't like it. Um, it's not a good way for him to go out. And again, I kind of do think he's going. I think most people expect him. Well, he'll bounce back and um, play next year and all that stuff. I just don't know. I mean, when you put this much energy and this much effort and, and all this stuff into coming back, I mean, re- remember, he was ready to retire. He, he, was, he didn't want to do it anymore. He didn't want to put in the work, and he put in a ton of work this year. This guy worked unbelievably hard on his body, on his conditioning, on his training, working with his teammates, building relationships, and it just crashed. And he tore his Achilles, and his body's breaking. I mean, that does something to you psychologically when you feel like your body's just broken down. I mean, he went out there, and he just looked... I mean, look, it, he didn't have a lot of opportunities, but let's be honest, that was just ugly. You watch him trying to run away, and it was impressive he was able to stay on his feet, but he gets tripped up, and he's flopping around. And then he goes down, and one sack in, and he tears his account. I mean, it's probably a fluke thing, but I'm just saying for his mentality about this. Like, you're going to go through, he has to go through rehab. He has to go through maybe surgery. You want to do this? You are a multi, 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 multi millionaire. You get basically nothing by coming back next year. I mean, the, the, the contract is a little bit goofy as I look at it. It looks like the Jets aren't going to be able to move off of him. Rodgers can retire, but he doesn't have to. Next year, his base salary is $3.1 million. 
In 2025, it's $37.5 million. So he could stick it out for two more years and get $37 million, or 40 total. But are you going to do that? You're going to come back, you're going to go through all this stuff, your, your, your torn Achilles, all the rehab, all the disappointment, all the heartache. And by the way, he's going to have this entire time to him, so he's going to be on a, in a boot, but he's free to, he's a free man. He doesn't have to train. He just has a lot of time to think about how much he, rather than having to hang out at the facility and watch other people play and try to fulfill his dreams, he, he, he has nothing this year to do but regret coming back. That's the reality. I shouldn't have come back. I had fun. I love this. It was, it was great. Maybe what he learned is he loved New York. You don't have to play football to be in New York. Go ahead and buy an apartment in New York. Buy an apartment in Manhattan. You can afford it. You can be there whenever you want. And you can just jet set back and forth between your, your Los Angeles ho- home and your Manhattan home. And when you want to kind of wind down, go to your Tennessee home. I know he had the fire. But how much does this absolutely just completely extinguish that fire? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, he, he definitely enjoyed it, and I could see him saying, you know what, this is a fluke, and I'm not worried about it. I'm going to come back stronger, better, you know, pending them doing some serious work on this offensive line. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to, I'm going to do some damage. Because, I mean, the Jets did look good. They beat the Buffalo Bills, mostly on account of the Buffalo Bills imploding. But, you know... If they can keep that up, Rodgers can look at it and go, dude, if I was in there, we'd win a Super Bowl. But I don't know. I really don't. I just, my hunch right now is he's, he's not coming back to the NFL. The other thing I wanted to bring up is this, um, and I posted this on social media as well. Talked a little bit about some of the statistics not being super fantastic for Jordan Love. All right, so as a recap, his EPA per play is fantastic. And largely that's because he threw, you know, completed a ton of third down, fourth down, and touchdown passes. These are great for EPA because you're on on third and 10, you're not really expected to score a lot of points. When you convert, it spikes. But some of the other things were somewhat questionable, right? Um, His success rate, 38.7%. That ranked 24th. CPOE, completion percentage over expected, he ranked 24th. So those things are not super great, right? And again, if, if you take away the fact that it's third down, fourth down, touchdown, and just assume that he's not just only going to be clutch on critical downs, and you just look at CPOE and success rate, he's like the 24th ranked quarterback. That's a little scary because I don't really expect him to be just massively clutch on critical downs forever while being simultaneously not very critical in other situations. However, what is it we've been saying about Jordan Love this entire time? He starts slow. Jordan Love starts slow and he heats up over time. So I wanted to take a look at it. In the first half, Jordan Love's EPA per play ranked 12th at .128. In success rate, he ranked 28th out of 30. Completion percentage, he ranked 27th out of 30. Completion uh, completion percentage over expected, he was 17.8% less than expected. His completion percentage was a 43.8, expected to be 61.6. He ranked 27th. He was a bottom five quarterback in almost every metric in the first half, compared to other quarterbacks in their first halves. That brings us to Jordan Love in the second half. Jordan Love's EPA per play was 1.125 in the second half. 1.125. Over one point for every play. That was number one. No question about it. Success rate jumped to 61.5%. That ranked third. His completion uh, percentage over expected was 12.4, which is fantastic because it means according to whatever metrics they're using, they're looking at these plays and saying, Jordan Love should have completed about 60.3% of his passes based on how how open guys were or whatever. He completed 72.7% of his passes. That ranks third. And then they have a composite EPA plus CPOE composite score. And um, he had a .465, which was number one. Jordan Love was, without any doubt, the best second-half quarterback in the NFL in week one. Now, you could look at this and say, well, okay, but but still, you can't just suck in the first half and then be good in the second half. I, I tend to take a positive outlook on this. It is weird that things seem so bad to start off. However, 
It's also very obvious that he's a young quarterback. The fact that he has the talent to be the number one quarterback at all in the second half, and the fact that he hasn't worked with these guys, the fact that he hasn't had a regular season start, I would say it's at least in part possibly possible, if I've put enough qualifiers in there, that maybe shaking off the rust means less of what we saw in the first half and more of what we saw in the second half. Maybe spending a little bit more time working with Dobbs, working with Reed, working with Wicks, who looked completely lost out there, working with Heath, who looked lost out there, getting back Christian Watson, getting more time with Luke Musgrave, who certainly needs a lot of time. Let's not forget, he did not play for a massive school. I know I get my hand slapped for talking like that, but the guy played in college for not a major program, didn't play particularly well early on in his career, and played two games last year. He needs a little bit of time, as does Tucker Craft. Jordan Love needs a little bit more time with Josiah DeGuara, maybe, assuming he sticks around a little bit. He needs some time with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, working with the offensive line. You know, th- this is really when the real work starts. I mean, they've ton- put, a, put a ton of work into Jordan Love over these years. But you don't really ramp up the amount of work until the regular season. That's when you get massive amounts of tape of what you do well and what you don't. They haven't seen this much thrown at Jordan Love before. Now is when you get a ton of tape to go back and look and be like, okay, let's let's refine this. Let's look at this. I mean, this offseason is going to be, they've got a, a book they're going to send to his quarterback coach in the offseason. Like, look, here's all the stuff we need worked on, whatever. So, yeah, I don't necessarily expect him to continue what he did in the second half, but I think you're going to see maybe starting some better first halves. Just just saying, just possible. Anyways, that's it. I don't want to take up too much time. We got fun stuff to do today. Let's take a quick break right here. Please check out OldSouthernBBQ.com. Ooh, package was delivered. Package was delivered. Hold on. I got it, boys and girls. I got it. So happy. So excited. I got to finish this podcast so I can go upstairs and make some chicken wings. Perfect timing. By the way, one little note. As I mentioned, the uh, the gift box that has the four barbecue sauces and the four rubs in it comes with a t-shirt. I'm a weirdo when it comes to t-shirts. I do not like uncomfortable shirts. I'm not going to wear uncomfortable shirts. This shirt is primo. Super light, super soft, very comfortable. Just a little extra added something. But I will be giving you all a full report. Check me out on social media, especially uh, pack underscore daddy on Twitter, X, whatever. I'm going to be getting some... Uh, Delicious pictures up there, but we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. All right, let's do this. So we're just going to go in order. We're going to start at the very beginning with opening thoughts. 
Jesse said, I missed y'all. Appreciate y'all. I need bear dimes in the chat. Wasim, 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 wasim. Get in it. <laughs> Get the FJLs going for Jordan Love. FJL. 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 Let's go. I got the juices, man. I'm fired up. Game time needs to be here ASAP. I'm fired up. Listen, this is a major game. Packers literally are the underdog. I mean, everybody picking the Bears to be winners in this one. Everybody picking the Bears to be number one. Into this game, I am nervous. <laughs> and I'm not nervous because I think the Bears will lose. I'm nervous 110% because of PTSD. I know it is. By the way, I'm only going with three channels today. One of the things I also like to do when I do Laughing at the Enemy, if I'm going to pick on you a little bit, I'm going to shout out your channel and I'm going to encourage people to go subscribe to it. I want to be able to track where I'm at. So only people that had like scores or times or anything else on there, those are the only ones I was able to kind of pick out the good spots. So today we've got the Windy City Breeze. This is new to the channel. Never laughed at this enemy. But like every, I, I, I'm dead serious about this too. I've, I've never put somebody on the show that I was like, these guys are friggin' idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. It seems like a very, very cool show. So the Windy City Breeze, we've got a very common channel, which is Bears Now by Chat Sports. And then another relatively common show. This one's a little bit on the um, Homerish, depending on exactly who's talking. But it's CHGO Sports. So go like their videos, go subscribe. Anyways, back to the show. So they're going to lean on Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Slide an extra guy in the box if you need to. Like, get Jordan Love into third and medium, third and long, and make him make a play. We know Jones and Dillon can gash people. They gashed the Bears twice last year. Don't let it happen again this year. Christian Watson is out. Uh, you know, so Romeo Dobbs and a bunch of young guys on the outside, like, that's advantage Chicago. But I do got the Bears coming out in this game with a dub. I'll say 20, 20, 27-20. You know what? 27-20, I wouldn't feel bad about the game. Here's the thing. There's a lot of scenarios that I don't feel bad about, right? Realistically, there are. There's a lot of scenarios where I'm like, okay, we're going to be all right. We're going to, you know, like, we're going to make the best of this. I think if this game ends up being a 17-15 game, we're pissed off. Bears fans oh, as a yeah. whole are pissed off. But if this is a 27-20 game, Justin throws the football well, you see a couple of nice passes go through, I don't think you're going to see Bears fans too upset. Hey, if you're in here right now, hit that like button, subscribe to the page. We got a lot to get to. Aki in the chat said Bears win 32 to, to Wood? Bears win 32? I don't know what that means. Uh, they call me Bam Bam said 27-21 Bears. Jermaine said 23-16 Packers with a Dolphins logo in huh? the picture. And we got this game underway, Good ladies point. and okay. gentlemen. And Justin I, I, Fields taking the field first. It's now Fields. He drops back. Bears looking to make a move. They go to the screen pass here. Up oh, here. Yeah. Here's Khalil Herbert trying to make something happen. He's past the 30. Good play there. As Khalil Herbert getting up field. Game. First watch along. Oh, there goes Khalil yeah. Herbert. Here we go. Woo, woo. Just as we go live, baby. We're breaking off first downs. It's Big first uh, down for the Bears. First first down of the season. Oh, this is close. Come on, chain crew. Come on. Oh, no. He's short based on the initial measurement. Oh, no. Oh, no. Unbelievable. Oh, no. Big yeah. fourth and one here. They're going oh, for it. Man. Right away. Let's just, go. Just, just do what I said that they should do with fields. And they did. Did Please he get it? They uh, got it? I don't More, know. I'm not sure. That looks short. I can't tell. This is all going to be he the He kind of jumped. Here. I don't think he got it. Oh, come on. Are That's you serious? Suck. Nightmare. That spot's yeah, not good. Yeah, I don't think he got it either. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm upset at the aggressiveness of that, but I do agree with you, right? Like that's a that's one of those where yes, I love that you're aggressive, but you got to complete that. You're on your own 40. Jordan Love's not, you know, you got to have a lot of confidence that Jordan Love just sucks. If you're going for that. Like that that tells me that the bear Allen Williams literally believes Jordan Love is not going to move the ball on us. Clock down to five now. Ball snapped. They hand the ball off here and tripped up in the backfield. Good defense by the Bear. All right, here we go. All right, third and thirteen. Big stop. Come big on. Big stop. We need a big stop right here. 
Oh my god! Uh, and a Packers first down. Is that Romeo Dobbs? It is Romeo Dobbs. It is. That is emphatically annoying. After you had him on third and thirteen. After the the first two good plays, I mean, come on now. Yeah. Six. Would they go on fourth down? We'll see. It's third and thirteen. They are in no man's land. Loving the shotgun. Let's see if the Bears bring pressure. They don't blitz a lot. They don't want to. Four-man rush. Love gets it out early. Caught on the slant. God almighty, he got it. Damn it. How do you give that up, man? Bears 0 for 2 on measurements so far. Uh, Scumbag Packers back at it. Referees getting paid off. Shocker. Oh, now they're saying it's first down. Not even a measurement. This is rigged. (laughs) Unbelievable. This is disgusting Somewhere, work. I don't know who, who had the chance to make that tackle for a two-yard Taylor loss. Johnson. You got to make that play, man. This is disgusting work. Ryan says, I just had a bad feeling about this game. It's it's, it's early. early. It's so it's early. early. It's early. It's so early. Ugh. Come on. This is more fun when the Come Bears on. were stopping these guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was more fun when the Bears had the ball. When it was third and 13, it was great. Let's go, boys. We Let's need a big stop here. Let's big Burdons. I need Burdons in the chat for the stop. Come on now. Third and goal. Here's Love coming up to the line. Bringing Dobbs across the middle. Dropping back. Jordan Love looking to try and get this to the end zone. Nowhere to go. Throws it in here. Got a touchdown. Threaded the needle. And the Bears trail 7-0 here early. Looks real freaking familiar. familiar. I mean, right over the middle. Boom. Eddie Jackson just terrible in coverage on that. Eddie Jackson absolutely terrible in coverage on that. I mean, that... That was a terrible way to start there. All right, here's a big stop here. Third and goal. Come on. Oh, oh God. Dobbs? Touchdown, Packers. Love takes the snap. Four-man rush. Steps up. Pumps. Fires. Touchdown. Eddie Jackson beat. The disastrous start is here. Romeo Dobbs. Unbelievable. Oh. Can't script it worse. That is very you- what, four for four on third down? Yeah. Three. Bears defense just couldn't Can't get, get off, off the field. field. Wow. I think three for three, but regardless, that's just piss poor, man. Second and goal at the four. Fields. Zone read keeps to the right. Trying to get the Go edge. Away. Sacked. Oh. Was, that a, was that a run pass option or a straight zone read? I think it was an RPO. That was a, that was a great play about that defensive lineman. Was that Preston Smith? No, that might be the... Who, didn't they Lucas take, Van Ness? Yeah, I think it I was. think it was. That's a good play by the Rook. Didn't throw it That's away. annoying. Justin's yeah. got to throw that ball out of the back of the end zone. Yeah. yeah. You cannot... At least I know rock. you think you're Superman. You can break every tackle, but you cannot lose this field position here. Yeah. 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 Well, he just thought he could beat Van Ness. Lucas Van Ness, the rookie out of Iowa. He thought he could beat him in the edge. That's actually yeah. impressive speed from Van Ness there. It was. Hey, now, Luke, really Luke, good defense there. Luke Van Ness is a beast. That was man. really good defense. It's going to be third goal now. I mean, like that, that. Van Ness was all over him. Justin tried to use the speed, couldn't get ahead of him. Bases, Fields look at efficient play calling sucks. I haven't loved the play calling, to be honest. Like, Fields looks to be in a rhythm to me. Like, like let's let's let him let it rip a little bit. Getsy is absolutely sh- what a uh, failure. He's Nagy 2.0. Rufus with the five just joined. Is it me or is Darnell Wright getting cooked? What well, seems like every play. Empty set for Fields. Herbert lined up in the slot. Oh Quick God. hitter in the flat. Again, Mooney. What is Getsy doing, Roly? Now, what is Getsy doing? Now I'm starting to get pissed off with the play calling. Because now you're giving the Packers a chance to get the ball back. I mean, that is just so bad. The, the horizontal pass game has not worked at all, Getsy. God, all freaking mighty. That's terrible. Horrible play call, but Claypool's got to do a better Claypool job. Claypool whiffs on the block, too. He's had a terrible first half. Claypool's Drops the ball. Horrific. But, like, still, it's just like, it's not working. It's uh, a terrible play call. They went uh, the wide receiver screen trying to get Claypool to block for Mooney. It did not work. Did not now work. it's third down. Has to dump it off. Oh, that ball's loose. Herbert picks it up. Stay in bounds. Damn it. What is he doing? Luke Getze is just wearing me the f*** out, dude. Because then you get to third and nine, and the Packers' D-line could just tee off. I mean, now, like, they get, it's now just, they're going to – instead of the Bears getting a chance to take the lead to half, the Packers can now double up. Yeah, now my scenario of worst case being up seven to six is very much in jeopardy now. 
And the Packers get a nice return to the 45. I mean, that's just so f***ing bad. We'll get these super chats. It's third down. Type your threes. Bears could actually get the ball back, Rolly. Third and 10. Love throws wide open again. Complete over the middle. Inside the 30. Wide freaking open, man. God, it's a first down, now, and they're in they're field, field goal territory, territory inside the 30. Well, this guy looks like someone who misses field goals. This is the first field goal attempt since 2006 by someone not named Mason Crosby on, <laughs> by the Packers. God, that guy is wild. He's That's got wild. the leg for this, though. Uh, it's, it's, right uh, down the damn middle. Jesus. I've been talking so much shit about this guy's accuracy. Oh, now i got to update the score because of this jerk. I, I, <laughs> he split the uprights perfectly. That's so annoying, bro. Okay. So this is a 52-yarder for the younger brother of Daniel Carlson, Anders Carlson. First field goal attempt by a kicker not named Mason Crosby since 2006. From the left hash, it'll be a 52-yarder high snap. Kick is up. He buried it, Roly. That was good from 60. 10 to 6 at the half. <laughs> Uh, how about this? Uh, we'll hit these last super chats, and then I'm going to sprint out real quick. Why do you think Getze is conservative? Maybe Boston's been awful in closed practices, and Getze can't trust his decision-making. If that's true, saying right, then what is this? the point of this season? Even if you want to make that argument, if he sucked in practice, well, then let's find out if he can what, what he's going to do in the games. That's what this year should be all about. Yes, we want to win, but you're telling me the formula Getsy's put out there is giving you the best chance to win? I don't think so. By the way, little halftime commentary here. Uh, this show, for those that are that are new to this and didn't do this last year, Bears now by Chat Sports. They got a ton of comments that pour in. People send super chats and then they read their comments or whatever. There is a guy by the name of Sang Ray Kim. This guy must have spent like ten grand. Sending in comments and all of his comments. I'm pretty sure he's a negative Bears fan. He's just talking so much trash, and he says, why do you think Getze is conservative? Maybe Buston's been awful in closed practices, and Getze can't trust his decision-making. He spent five bucks just to say that. <laughs> oh, so, I mean, you can just start to feel the, uh, the tension. So Windy City Breeze is pretty level-headed. They're not real upset. You've got CHGO. They're mostly just depressed, which is their normal attitude on that show. They don't get angry. They just get kind of mopey and sad and depressed. But chat sports, boy, they get heated. <laughs> and I love it. Let's go ahead and pick up the second half after this break. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast. And we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. I don't like this at all. Second like to three it. here. It feels like they're picking up momentum a little bit. I mean, they're, they're going to, if they can't stop them here. Dropping back, rolling out, right, love, looking back, cross the body, screen pass, and we got room to run. Here's Jones up the field. Nothing but daylight. Stevenson brings him down at the 10. He just muffed my man. <laughs> He just mucked hey, my man. Hey, that was a blitz play. No, this is this is this is what's wild about that. <laughs> that was an ugly play. I, I can't even I, I I can't even be upset about that because like that that's an ugly play. Nobody teaches that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He threw it across yeah, nah, his body going right. back. Like I get it. You you want to cover him there. You absolutely don't but that. but that that was what I can't even I don't even know how you would prepare for that. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's I will say this. That worked out. That worked good, out. That's, 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 one of them. <laughs> that's one of them. That worked out. It worked out. The edge guys actually played pretty good. 
Jordan Love on the boot to the left. Squares the hip. Oh. Screen on the other side. That's a nice design here. Oh, no. Aaron Jones off to the races. Inside the 30, the 20, the 10, down at the 7. Now, if you're going to run a screen, that's a creative design right there. Roll out left, flip the hips, throw right. That is misdirection. Fortunately, the Packers have entered the bet you red zone. That was a great design by Matt LaFleur. He's got three linemen out there blocking for Aaron Jones. Receivers, Two receivers blocking Eddie Jackson downfield. I mean, that is a creative design. I'd almost sell out on the run. Love, hands it off. Jones walks in. Touchdown. What do coaches say, Roly? How you start games and how you start halves. The Packers have kicked the Bears to start the game and to start the half. Disgusting. This is really disheartening. Oh, man. This is really, really disheartening. You thought it would be different, man. And this is just really bad performance from Chicago. It's just stupid as f because you've just shot yourself in the foot so many times in this half or in this game. They're, All right. I, and the half yard line, I don't put you in the gun, but they are. God, way and too easy, bro. Way too easy. Well, the good news is I have Aaron Jones on my fantasy team. Ugh. I mean, that's awful, bro. Third and one, and they just get smoked up front. Here's now Love handing it off again. Easy touchdown there. And the Packers extend their lead. What is that? What is swim? Hey, 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 listen, it don't matter. They up. 16 to 6 Bears trail here. And now the question is, what is this Bears <laughs> offense gonna look like? <laughs> yeah, they're dropping the let's go kick another field goal. <laughs> and here we go with another field goal. I mean, the offense. It'd be so funny if she's right, though. Bro, I mean, the offenses look pedestrian, bro. But listen, you gotta. You got to respond. You can't come out of this play here, this drive here. You can't come out of this without points, without seven. Not yet. Forget you, three. Nah. You can't come out of this without seven. As Tyler Scott back there, he takes the uh, – the the. You don't even wear football jerseys. Here's now. <laughs> Justin <laughs> rolling gonna, out. He's rush. wrapped up immediately. Oh, man. Justin Fields sacked. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just put my feet up real quick. Hold on. Is camera's on me? Oh, no. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be on you. All right. There you go. Ah, it's going nowhere Rolled fast. out. Blitz came. He had nowhere to go. Might as well go ahead and crack some. Uh, we should have bought some beer. Foreman starting the second half. Oh, my goodness. Fields blown up on the play action boot. Completely untouched for a loss of 10. I mean, this this is falling apart fast, Rolly. This is a. Great halftime adjustments. Really solid. I, and you come out of that with no points. I, uh, Fourth and 12. <laughs> it's just. It's just hey, hey, listen. This is why I wanted to call the game. You can't Watch sit him. here and he's just getting red. Freaking, he's getting red. Look like he's getting red about a moment. Bro, you can't sit here and just freaking <laughs> keep doing the same stuff. Like, my main thought here is the punt is underway. Packers catch it at their own 23. Missed tackle. Missed tackle. Jaden Reed off to the races. Pass midfield to the Bears 40. I mean, that is just piss poor. They've been dominated in all three phases of the game today. I mean, my my main thought here is like, there, like everything lined up for you to finally beat the Packers here. Like, if you don't beat them now, when are you going to? Like, <laughs> it's just, it's so fucking bad, dude. Like... I mean, early. there's nothing to say. Like, like the wind just has been completely taken out, like of our sails here. You doubled them up in total yardage in the first quarter and a half, and you were down. And now the Packers have started to play well, and you're just getting your ass kicked. It's just a fucking joke, dude. It just pisses me the fuck off, man. They got options now. It's fourth and three. They can either kick a field goal or go for it. Call me crazy. I kind of hope they go for it. Love takes the snap, throws over the middle, wide open again, and it's going to be a touchdown for Aaron Jones. Wide open. Untouched. No one within 10 yards of him. Unbelievable. Simple angle route. TJ Edwards on Aaron Jones. You think that's a mismatch? You kidding? I mean, how do you go into a fourth down with that situation? 
Like, how do you leave TJ Edwards on Aaron Jones? They're going to go for it. Good. Come on. Please now you need it. to stop. Please don't get it. Big, big stop. Pressure, here. pressure. God. Oh, Come on, bro. Jones. Mm. That's a great throw. That's rough. Jordan Love dropping back here, trying to find a man, and does. Trying to get to the end zone. Here is a touchdown, Packers. The Chicago Bears look atrocious right now. 23-6. to There's a whole lot of games. Jordan Love is picking the Chicago Bears apart right now in this second half. He's now at 167 yards, two touchdowns. I they better he better figure something. Hey out. hey hey listen he better figure. And something Jordan Love out. looks like he's getting better he better as the game progresses. Something out. You got to make a play here. You got to make a play. I mean listen they putting the camera on Luke for a reason. Yeah. Um, I I sweat I would. I, bro, here's now Justin Fields. He's in the shotgun. Ball snapped back. Trying to get to him. Pressure coming towards Justin. He's got to make a run. Ball is oh, out. Bro. It's on the ground. Packers have it. And okay. we're at a full scale meltdown. We're at a full scale meltdown. To the offensive line and the Bears, and yeah. I think that that's you cannot go shown through. Again. If he wants to take a shot, but he doesn't have the time oh, either, so he's got to go. Oh, oh and the ball gosh. comes out. Shice. This is not good. Stir. Oh my god. <sighs> no, that's that's a fumble. It's, fumble. it's going to be the Packers, Packers ball. ball, and they're going to be that's inside a, the thirty yard line. Twenty nine. Fields takes the snap under pressure. Scrambles, fumble, backers recover. Bills trying to make a play. You can't fumble the ball, obviously. I mean, a game like this will make you lose all hope, dude. How does this even happen, man? Like, what do you I don't, say? I don't, I mean, I feel like the silence is is saying everything you need to say. Like, it doesn't get worse than this. This is the most, imba- like, I'm not the biggest Bears guy, but like, dude, this it, is the most embarrassing performance I've seen. I've seen some bad Bears football, Rolly, with some bad teams. This is easily the worst performance I've ever witnessed. Again, it, if you told me they'd lose, I, I could believe that scenario. But like this? To get just run out of the gym like this? Like, you were getting dominated. Dude, in all three phases. And how about dominated. this? You have a million f- ups in the first half, yet you're only down four. And to get hit in the mouth in the third quarter like this after that? That was a big time. Good hit. tackle by Tremaine Edmonds. Edmonds. Yeah, you flex, Tremaine. You're down f***ing 18. I hate that, dude. I hate when players do that. You are getting run over. And yeah, you make a good play there, and you're going to flex. I f- that is a lack of awareness. You know what you do after that play? You get back to where you line up and you get ready for the next play. I hate that. You are getting punked. Tell you what, at this point, there's two things at play here. Number one, chat sports is significantly funnier. (laughs) He is getting so angry. And part two, this has taken a very long time trying to edit all this together and get everything lined up, finding all the right plays. We're going to just roll with chat sports from here on out because this is funny enough for me. On the play clock, seven, six, five, takes the snap, fields, has time, end zone, touchdown, touchdown, Darnell Moody! Let the man throw the football, please! Holy shit. Let's go, come on! Not done yet! Let's go! Not done yet, Harrison! Oh, Bears going for two. Trying to make it a 10-point game. They're not even going to get the playoff, snap it! Herbert gets the handoff, walks in. All right. All right. Ten-point game. Harrison, we got some juice. And that's with Fields averaging 7.2. Here we go. It's third and a lot. It's about three and a half. Come on, Bears. Oh, the receiver moved. Ball score. There we go. Got the juices flowing. All right. Keep on those, spamming those threes. Third down. Third and eight. Love takes the snap. All day to throw left side. It's wide open and it's caught. Oh, my God. I just like, how can he have that much time to throw and have a guy wide open? I don't get that. Come on, Bears. Like, who is missing the assignment here? Is Jackson supposed to go with them? Like, they've been, the secondary has been confused all day. All day. God. Fumble! He fumbled the snap. He got it back. Get him. The guy's clearly holding. He throw. What? What did I just watch? Wide open downfield for a 40-yard pickup. What just happened? And by the way, watch this. Was it... uh, That's a hold right there. 
That guy right there is clearly getting held. But what is happening here? How is there a busted coverage? Did someone just cheat up after the drop snap? That's the only explanation. What is are the Bears doing? This is a disaster. First and goal at the four. I mean, you have to hold them to three or the game's over. Love, throws, end zone. Touchdown. Can I just interject here and say, I didn't realize, this is the best three-play series ever. Third and eight, converts it for 18 yards. Then from first and ten, you get the fumble, recovery, 37-yard uh, touch uh, play to Luke Musgrave, followed by a touchdown to Romeo Dobbs. That's incredible. <laughs> you can't do anything but laugh. By the way, for as much love as we gave the defense, three straight touchdown drives in the second half. And it wasn't bad coverage, just a better catch. Romeo Dobbs. Good ball by love. I'll give him credit there. It's a good throw. Packers, eight for 13 on third down, one for one on fourth down. Bears, one for eight on third down, 0 for one on fourth down. Dude, watching this team is a fucking chore sometimes. <laughs> It is, dude. This game has been brutal. Dude, this has been a disaster class. I'm already. But if you went to bed last night and thought of the worst possible scenario... I don't think it would have been this bad. <laughs> I'm serious. It's been bad now. Well, unless Fields had a season-ending injury. Uh, yeah. That's the only thing that would make this worse. Um, I think that's a fantastic point, by the way, because I even said best-case scenario was not this. I didn't envision this as a best-case scenario. I still don't think Love has played that good. First and 10 at the 25. Yep, QB draw down 17, Getsy. He stinks. I'm souring on Luke Getsy fast, Rolly. Like, really fast. I I don't want to overreact to one game, but like... Were you high on him? Like, I obviously, I didn't... Really High-ish. I like a lot of the concept. Like, the concept of Mooney is a great design, but like, then he does that. It's like, what are you doing? You're down 17 gotta throw the ball by the way i do think they use luke getsy as a scapegoat i also think he sucks i mean just just as an example whenever anything doesn't work they call it a bad play call the one touchdown pass they call it a great play design like really did do you really like the design or are you just happy that the guy got wide open because Keyshawn nixon just decided not to cover him but again how did he get the job he got the job because he worked under Matt LaFleur and was the quarterback coach for the freaking league MVP. So you get the Matt LaFleur offense, you got experience with Rodgers, like this is a great thing. And you got experience with the Packers and what they do, and that'll help us beat the Packers. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Okay, how did he get the Packers job? Aaron Rodgers hired him. Why did Aaron Rodgers hire him? Because they're friends, very good friends. How did they become friends? He was a coach there for the wide receivers. And he became friends that way. Then he got fired. Aaron Rodgers says, no, I like that guy. I want him back. Bring him back as my quarterback coach. Matt LaFleur's like, whatever. You can pick your own quarterback coach. I guess we'll bring this guy in. That's it. He couldn't even hack it as the wide receivers coach. He went back to college after that. He only came back into the NFL as a quarterback coach under for Aaron Rodgers under a great head coach and play caller because Rodgers handpicked him as a friend. It's no different than Nathaniel Hackett. He's not where he is because he's good. He gets where he is because of Aaron Rodgers. And Hackett, by all assumptions here, is significantly better than Luke Etsy, by the way. Like, he's not head coach material, but he's probably offensive coordinator material. I'm not even entirely sure of that. It's hard to know because Matt LaFleur is really the offensive coordinator slash play caller for the Green Bay Packers, so who knows? But yeah, Get Getsy is unqualified. Can he learn the job and end up doing it great? Sure. But based on his, his resume, there's no reason they should have hired him. It was a stupid hire. Just as a reminder, Matt LaFleur was number one. Hackett was number two. He went to Denver. Adam Stenovich was number three. We know that because the Packers decided to pass on Luke Getze and promote our offensive line coach, Adam Stenovich, which would have made Luke Getze at best number four, if even that. So the Packers, because of Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers having success, the Bears decided they wanted to poach somebody and ended up getting the guy fourth in line to try to implement what's going on. And he wasn't even a Matt LaFleur hire. He was an Aaron Rodgers hire. Yeah, let, let Eberflus cook. Let Poles cook. Yeah, exactly. Play pull, total non-factor. I get that ball's high, but he should probably catch that. Third and 11, and in the blink of an eye, 
I just like, this is one of those games, really, where it's like, where do you go from here? I mean, by the way, Tampa beat Minnesota today. That game on the road next week, <laughs> that's a 50-50 game now, for being honest. Fields takes the snap. It's going to fire over the middle, picked off right to the linebacker. That's terrible. Way Walker. Pick six. He broke two tackles. Yeah, that's bad Justin Fields right there. You won't see me defending him on that. Holy sh**, they're bad. This has been maybe the worst performance I've seen in a long time. <sighs> Dude, no, I'll say it. They're bad. Like, Basically, hard. We can only go off one game. I know, but it's hard to like say, Dude, what would Justin Fields even see? That's just bad. That, you know what that is? That's we're down 17, and I'm just going to force it on third and 11. You can't do that, man. Now, your stupid f***ing OC calling a QB draw in the first play is moronic, but. Oh, my God. I, I really don't know, man. Tyreek Stevenson, his patented uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. How is that possible? He's, He's not, not even on, on the, the field. Bench? What, he run on the field? Reminder, we have Beijing. He'll take it over. Dude, he's the third quarterback right now. Like, they're not even ready for him to be the backup. By the way, I find it hilarious. There was a comment real early on this last little clip here. He says, that Tampa game is 50-50 now. This is exactly what I've been talking about. Bears fans and every other fan base of bad teams always picks all the bad teams and says that's a win. They looked at Tampa and said that's a win. Bro, you are the bad team. You don't understand. Tampa's looking at you and circling it and saying, we got that guy beat. You, you're down to 50-50 now? I'm sorry. Tampa Bay beat Minnesota on the road. Minnesota might have not looked good, but a bad Minnesota team is still better than the Chicago Bears team, who just got freaking railroaded at home. It was maybe 50-50 prior to week one. Give me a break. And he's, he's all dramatic about it. I don't know. It's like maybe 50-50. I'm, I'll, I'll be honest about it. Like I'm, I'm, I hate to even say it, but I got to be honest. Like, no, no, it's fine to say it because it's common sense. Here's them catching up on some of their comments. And that's that's just a joke. X-Man, uh, FGB, Packers will always suck. Bear down all day. I mean, they'll suck in our eyes, but the score says another sh story. I mean, what can we say? Louis, Bears still suck. Unreal, first team defense is not practiced together. Well, not once before the season. Gets an never call plays before he came here. SMH. Welke, Bears have been out coached and outplayed. Sad. No doubt. And to do that at your home stadium in a game of this caliber is embarrassing. Look, if both teams play well and the Packers win, so be it. But I, I think the Packers wanted it more. Ball tipped to the line of scrimmage. Uh, Bears O-line is trash. D-line also. Love has all day to pass. Justin has pressure in his face in like one second. Yeah, look, they've invested in the trenches, but it's still not to the level it needs to be. I don't think we thought it would be elite overnight, but... Yeah, you got pushed around, especially in the second half. Fields, sacked again. Bears have to punt. Braxton Jones, man. Cody Whitehair just whipped. I mean, have some fucking pride, dude. Good God. With the Bears' current coaching staff, might not be it. Yeah. And, and you know what sucks about that? Is you can't give, a third, you can't give another staff to Fields. So, you know what I'm right. saying? So like, like, if this staff isn't it... Not only are you moving on from staff, but like you're you're feel you're not. It would crush me if Fields went somewhere else and lit it up. Like did well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think he's the perfect quarterback, but like he's so unique as an athlete, and like I just don't think they're putting him in great positions to succeed. I don't. I just got to interject here because partially that's a good point. I mean, if the coaching staff is a problem and you fire the coaching staff, you're not going to fire polls, so the coaching staff will get fired. Poles is going to move on from the coaching staff, and Fields is absolutely gone. Now, it probably doesn't matter either way, because Fields is going to be gone either way. But, what if he did go somewhere and tear it up? <laughs> let, me just, let me just be very clear. If Fields goes to an AFC team, I'm going to be a massive Justin Fields fan. Just like right now, I'm, I'm, I'm all about Mitch Trubisky in Pittsburgh. I'm all about it. I hope he tears it up out there. If he goes to the Jets or something, heck yeah, dude. Get after it, Fields. I would be all about that. I've never been less optimistic about this team than I am right now, and that includes last season. I knew what last season was. I knew what last season was. Here, rip off some wheel spins, Rolly, during the two-minute warning. I mean, I'm being real. Like, look, do I obviously think I could have called a better game? I'm not going to say that. But, like, 
I, I can't get over how bad Getsy was today. I really can't. I really can't. All right, we'll stop picking on Bears now on uh, Chat Sports. I got a couple others to, to send us out of here. Um, Nate hooked me up with some TikToks. I'm going to save some of these for tomorrow because they kind of fit the format of, like, you know, having time to digest and then giving your takes as opposed to the live reacts. But we got three. Let's start with this one. You may have even seen this one already, but this is a Bears fan. He was giving updates. He was all excited, like things were great. Let's go. And then at the very end, when the game was over, this is what he said. There's 10 minutes left. We're out. Just f***ing embarrassing. Embarrassing. I paid $200 to come to this stadium, and I know a lot more people who paid a lot more money to come to this stadium. And you see that performance? That performance right there? F***ing ridiculous. Packers fans are going to be all been here, and I mean, it's week one, overreactions happen, but my God, this Bears team looked like dog today. Matt Eberflus, let Justin Fields throw the ball. I know that he just had an interception. Oh my God, huge ordeal. But you didn't let him throw the ball at all, not once. This is just a complete show, and I have so much to say about this game. It was that bad. Matt Eberflus, just horrible, horrible play calling. Looking at the defense, they couldn't stop the run at all. They couldn't stop the run once. They couldn't stop it at all. This just sucks. It's a shitty Sunday. And then I got two more. These were during the game, so there are even better reactions. I wanted to try to stitch them in as they were happening, but I forgot. But it's going to be just as glorious, I promise. It matter. It don't fucking matter. Every fucking year, these fuckers fucking fuck us in the ass. This team fucking sucks against Green Bay. Whether Rodgers is a quarterback, Jordan Love is a quarterback, hell, pick someone for the fucking stands. They can beat us. I'm gu- I guarantee you. Such a pathetic fucking team. Fucking pathetic piece of the shit. We're getting fucked by Jordan Love. Luke Getze is so fucking dumb. Half of the plays he's calling are screenplays. If realize this was one. And... <laughs> You can't even knock him down. You can't even knock him down. You can't even knock him down. Doesn't matter who it is. It never does. It never matters. This Bears team will forever, ever be by the Packers. I've seen it all. I have seen it all. You can't make this. You can't make this off. I can't. This O line, this defense, it's still the same problems from last year. You spend ninety million dollars in the offseason for what? I have a fucking aneurysm. I'm having an aneurysm. Outplayed by fucking Jordan Love. F- this sh- Caleb Williams. Nah, I can't. I can't give up on Fields that easy. I'm not giving up on Fields. I'm just fucking bad. It's, I can't even talk, bro. I can't even talk. I'm just so fucking bad. Fucking f- this. Sh- <sighs> fucking hell, man. I gotta clean this sh- up. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it for the season. Wrap it up. Seasons. Fucking. Over! Empty backfield for Love. He's looking. Too much time. Oh, he's got a f***ing open man! Fields. Fields. Fields! That's an open dart out, Mooney! Come on, boys. Fields is looking. He's got an open man. It's DJ Moore! That's another first down, DJ Moore! Give me a stop, boys. Pass rush, please. Too much time. He's got an open man! Please, defense. He's got a. There he goes down! Yannick! Play fake. Oh, God. Oh, he's wide open. He's got so much space. Oh, no. There goes Jones. That might be a house call. Oh, my God. Please, defense. There it is. They just walked the f in. Get there. Oh, he's got all day. He's got Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is going to walk into the f end zone. I'm turning it off. I'm f***ing turn it off, chat. Goodbye. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what I live for. You guys have a good rest of your day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.